Welcome to The Lost Signals Discusses Film and TV. Using the revolutionary Manzor Mosi Thurlow scale, or MOTS, we scrupulously review these art forms with an emphasis on narrative structure. Join us for another entertaining episode. Hi, and welcome to a crossover episode of Lost Signals Reviews uh, Television and Movies, and... Um, well, Singles discusses philosophy. And Sprinkle philosophy. Yeah. Uh, today we're discussing Bombshell, the Hedy Lamar story. Now, as a little bit of background, I, I teach computer science, and I am very much interested in basically promoting women in the STEM field. Yeah. Uh, and so generally, Ada Lovelace is one of my heroes and a woman I promote uh, when it comes to STEM, and she's kind of the default position. She's most associated are, with it. Are you the first programmer of all time? And I was looking into other people who were uh, like uh, in the forefront of computer science, and I, a lot of them were what could be considered polyglots, Renaissance men or women, Renaissance people, if you will. And I was curious to know what happened to the polyglot. Uh, because that was a big thing back in like the 1700s, 1800s. And nowadays, it seems that that kind of it's the people off. with the, the breadth of knowledge, they don't exist anymore. And I brought that up to a fellow uh, a person in my grad school. And she mentioned to me, have you ever heard of Hedy Lamar? And I was like, well, I know of the actress Hedy Lamar. And she's like, no, no, you really need to look into her history. You should watch a documentary called Bombshell. And, I, and the more I thought of Hedy Lamar, I realized that she's a person who is unrecognized in the history of what she contributed uh, in her accomplishments. Absolutely. Yeah. And the fact is she should be more well known. So I brought this up to all my fellow podcasters that we should do an episode on Hedy Lamar. And I think and that we it's, uh, she is quite, the person and has quite the history mm -hmm. yeah. and it's such a tragic story. Anyway, I'm Jonathan Ian Manzer here with uh, Scott Thurlow. Without Eddie, we would not have Bluetooth. That's absolutely true. And Christopher Morgan. Hello. And I should also say that uh, we're, we're some people are afraid of uh, the coronavirus or COVID-19 uh, or uh, if you want. Uh, yeah. virus. <laughs> if you got the Resident Evil angle. <laughs> more racist terms for <laughs> I was actually um I'm fighting a I'm fighting not to get a sinus infection which is my main reason uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah uh, okay. I mean Beth Beth told me I needed to get out of the house more otherwise I was going to become like a speaking of Howard Hughes kind of <laughs> <laughs> neurotic hypochondriac so yes well you're already well that, Beth so. will be her, your honey and water because Howard Hughes uh his planes we'll get to that yes. we'll get to that but uh, nonetheless, so uh, we are attempting a new format to allow a little more uh, uh, cowardly bunch of our uh, podcasters. And the to, show must go on. The new virus yeah. atmosphere, we'll call it. Uh, and those who are more uh, life-affirming to uh, gather together still uh, for the podcast. Anyway, uh, I don't like uh, I'm not sorry, this would, should we give a brief history of Hedy Lamar's story? If you don't mind, so if you don't know who Hedy Lamar is, what you would know her from is her uh, her Hollywood roles in the 1930s for like late 30s, right on the onset of World War II, leading into and then thereafter the war. She's a very famous and beautiful actress. That's what she's known for in quotes, if anybody can't see this. However, what she also did, like she wasn't she wasn't just a pretty face, and I was like, her legit, like, sort of, like, like, that's the barrier she had to overcome. She was an incredibly intelligent person, incredibly be intellectually uh, curious person, and was, like, very spot on. So she, her hobby was inventing stuff. Like, just, that's what she, who she was. So on top of her being, like, yes, she was in, like, a bunch of famous boomtowns, one of the famous ones, a number of other things. She was hired by MGM. She was hired by, uh, the ho again, the Hollywood system in the 30s, 40s. But, like, behind the scenes, in quotes, 
she was inventing things. She, she married two or three, she had six marriages. Two or three of them were to inventors. What, or She wasn't married to Harry, Howard Hughes, but she was at a fling with him. But because she, she was so interested in, into, into science and STEM, as Ian mentioned, mm -hmm. and she had ideas, which as we'll get into, were used. She and her, one of her husbands invented a patent that was going to be used to radio control torpedoes in the fucking, in World War II. And the Navy took it like, yeah, 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 okay, uh -huh. And like sort of like you know, shunted her away, like brushed her under the table, but they used that technology and that patent and was continued, like that is the core of, like I mentioned, where wireless and or Bluetooth sort of comes from, right? So it, she's just so underappreciated and her story is so fascinating. It was why we chose to do this. So like basically the general idea and Bombshell, the documentary is available on Netflix and also on, believe on Amazon, right, Chris? Yeah. So it's free on Netflix. Yeah. $3 to run. Regardless, regardless of what we're about to say, <clears throat> check it out. Highly recommend it because it explores her story, explores that side of her and how she was spurred. And like, she was a creative person and she was interested in the technology of the times and contributed literally to winning the war and, and beyond that even. So just sort of a salute and like, like Ian said, the, um, the idea of the polyglot, so. Yes. Uh, Chris, what did you know about Haley Lamar before we did this uh, podcast about her? Oh, well, this, is, this is funny because I knew she was an actress and we had on the board Hedy Lamar and I'm like, was it an AFI thing? Was it to, to so happen to have conflicting names? But I also do, as soon as the uh, documentary starts, I started, I forgot that I had heard that she had written down some ideas that later would be the model for like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. So it started coming back to me, but I had no, no idea to the extent of which, how influential she was and how little credit, if any credit she got, you know, until towards the end of her life, which was tragic, you know. And I still think that she didn't get the credit of culturally that no. deserves. Uh, actually, oddly enough, I knew of her primarily through Blazing Saddles with Hedley yeah, Lamar. Because there's a joke about that. Yeah, like, yes. but if you don't, like, I was the, probably the least familiar with her as a person, who she was and what she contributed and what she did. So yeah, like learning like her actual story and like her, her entire arc and biography, if you will, was incredibly fascinating and just affecting to me. And as our audience might know, not much affects me. But this did, and yeah, she, as you mentioned, she might have retroactively gotten a bit of credit for watching it, but, but nowhere near what she should have been recognized for. So one of the great tragedies of her life, which there are many, whether you're dealing with World War II, and it's interesting how much we're uh, reporting right now that deals with the repercussions of World War II, uh, she had so to, to be doing Austria it. because she was uh, Jewish and uh, the rise of Hitler and all that. But go to America where she was contracted into that. Again, okay, we're doing with uh, the general Buster uh, Keaton. Yeah. Right. And yeah. how uh, <laughs> his contracts later on destroyed him. The contracts with MGM like uh, limited her. And then she dated Howard Hughes and developed a using nature with fish and aerodynamics fish and birds developed uh instead of the box wings the like, kind hey, of curve. howard I, I think this will design will work better he was like that's yeah. genius uh but howard hughes gets the credit for that mm -hmm. not uh hedy exactly. lamar and how she developed this patent for differential frequencies that was shelved by the navy only to be used by uh male scientists later on it's such, I was actually uh, crying at, or at the end, tearing up, because this is such a tragic story, but such an important story as well for I, science, I agree. but also women in science. And I agree, but, um, well, two things. Number one, I'm really glad we read Mouse before this, mm -hmm. because when she had to flee uh, Austria when she did, okay. there was a much better context for me having recently recently read that but um as far as like going th back to nature and you know being able to improve the airplane that's kind of going back to da vinci so like 
Mm -hmm. Vinci was here, and correct me if I'm wrong, he got in a lot of trouble with the people at the time, or was was he in Renaissance? So he was Yes, a, well he was in the Renaissance, but like if you recall, it's not like hundred percent verified, but as a small tangent, Da Vinci was almost likely a, a gay person. And that's you know acceptable now, but at the time, right? So like there was that uh, angle and aspect attached to it. So in the same way, yeah, she was both of them were polyglots, were Renaissance people who were like more well like more well known for what they're famous in quotes famous for than any than history has given them credit for. And maybe now, like retroactively, she is getting the credit she's due, right? right. Which is funny because Da Vinci did a lot of that, looking at nature and developing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like man developed over to here, but it took Hedy Lamar to actually, you know, somebody who wasn't part of the male paradigm. Yeah, I'm going to get pretty feminist on this one. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. Invite your wife Beth on this episode. <laughs> She's actually yeah. playing Tomb Raider, but um, <laughs> one of the most famous games ever made. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I thought it was interesting that you know basically, man has like kind of skipped over everything Da Vinci did, and she actually went back to it. Like you know, one of the first, for lack of a better term, phys physicists, physical scientists, engineers. Yeah, engineers. Yeah. So um, I. It's it the documentary is amazing and she was just an incredible person. And I just I I, I the more I think about it, the more connections you make, or I, at least I make, and it's just it's I don't know, it's a it's a it's a celebration and a tragedy. So it's a bittersweet the fascinating tale and like again, like so underexplored. Like even if you have heard of her, and like again, I admit that I really hadn't had much knowledge even like within pop culture general you know overview but now having delved into it it's so it's super fascinating and this documentary does a really good job of exploring it even she herself like in her own words in the documentary says nobody knows like nobody sees me for who i am they see me for what they think i want to be or what they think they want me to be and or some fantasy that i'm perpetuating because of the way the system works of the hollywood system or just like you know for lack of a better term, the patriarchal system at the time. And that's extremely unfortunate, but she was an incredibly expressive person who almost like in, uh, intuitively figured out things, like was interested in these kind of things and contributed to, in, like, invented a technology that in some way, shape or form we are using today and which she is attributed zero credit for, for the most part. One of the fascinating aspects of this, and my initial idea of doing this episode was to highlight her achievements, but just as important is highlighting her tragedies. Mm. One of the first films she did was an erotic piece, not to the style of like porn. I think in the uh, but it was scandalous. In the episode, in the episode they episode. say it's almost as the equivalent at that time of releasing a sex tape. Uh, but however, it, uh, it, it was a sexualized piece and it haunted her, uh, career for yeah, a very they put a long stain time. On her, like... And then once she overcame that, she was viewed as a sex symbol that she couldn't escape either. So regardless of what path she took, she was objectified and not, uh, and not appreciated for her and, intellect, yeah, and which recognized. is what she actually deserves credit for. There and it's it's such a it's such a sad tale. I'm, I I I think the important thing is to recognize her for her achievements for what she. If you fl float on a plane, it's because of her. If you use a cell phone, it's because of her. Because of her, yeah, um, exactly. In some and, way, shape, or form, or some like you know down the line. Yeah, and uh, also what's completely tangential here is that we're dealt with a lot of. World War II work here, and the act of that she was inspired for her work by the torpedoing of ships by the Germans yeah. from uh, uh, from transferring from England to the U.S. Something yeah. I never like. I think I learned about briefly in high school. Mm -hmm. Once again, that this kind of 
not even small, like uh, al- almost footnote of history now. I think it's a good term. Inspired, I yeah. think that we all use nowadays uh, with uh, yeah. these yeah. differential frequencies. Yeah. She was a refugee, mm-hmm. refugee from Austria during the onset of World War II, came to America, wasn't even quite like nationalized or citizenized, mm-hmm. right? But like all the Hollywood execs, like all the, <laughs> this is going to sound bad, but also like the Weinsteins of the time or like, oh, right, that, that, that's what she was like. She, walk, like. she would walk into a room and all eyes would stop and be upon her, right, for her physical beauty. But beyond that, she was, she just couldn't help but being like curious and inventing things and like had amazing ideas that were like applicable to technology at the time that were way ahead of the curve of the general like you know baseline at the time like we said yeah we're using in some shape or form using her core ideas right now for technology but all anyone remembers her for is like oh she was a beautiful uh a 1940s 20s star 30s to 40s star in films and then sort of disappeared no that isn't the case she was like she would had so many pressures on her because of that system because of like her marriages and like just everything that was ex- a expected of her and like thrust upon her as a person and as a woman at the time, but she want she wanted her freedom and she wanted to explore her creativity. And this documentary, I think highlights the fact that it's just so underappreciated her accomplishments, as you said, mm-hmm. and the spotlight should be shown upon her and there's a really good job of doing so. And yeah, you had to give all the credit in the world to Hetty, for what she did, even if you've never heard of her, and you, you jump on your phone right now, you're, you're using her shit. One of the things I found interesting was I started the documentary with a quote of hers that said, if you want to be glamorous, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember the exact quote. If you want to look, if you want to be glamorous, all you have to do is stand still and look vacant, essentially what she said. Yep. And I think as things went on after her career started to fall apart, um, that she kind of kind of adopted that in a weird way like in other words she was getting plastic surgery but she's actually coming up with ideas for the plastic she surgeon. was telling the plastic surgeons how to do it but she kept getting That's plastic incredible. surgery to fit plastic surgery and then you know being put on like the um methamphetamines and you know yep. being told that there are b vitamins or whatever well, i mean it's, it's, a, it's a feel good thing yeah it, it's just like once again it's just like the hollywood elite the Harvey Weinstein's the whole misogynistic thing in that somewhere inside of her, even though like verbally she was um, being very forthright when she could, when she was given a platform. Um, but like emotionally, I kind of feel like that was that when she gave that quote, that, that had been her, like part of her had succumbed to, you know, what um, Hollywood wanted of her, which is basically, I think the story of her life was, she was living the life about what she wanted to be and what everybody else wanted from her. And those two didn't quite ever match. Exactly. There were two separate facets, right? She did like, she struggled to reconcile and even the public, like in the sense, like only viewed one of them, only wanted one of them. I think the real tragedy here is that whether she was inventing and rejected, whether she was producing her own films and rejected by the Hollywood And directing and, them. Yeah. Oh. Uh, she eventually gave in to the system and attempted to be what they wanted her to be versus pursuing who she knew she was. And that's the real tragedy here. Yeah. The system beat, it, beat her down as it does so many. So I teach career science and I, I, to go back to your initial um, motivation for this is that a fifth of my class in introduction to programming is female. It's a male-dominated system. And I don't believe that men are better at programming than women are. Yes, there are personality types that are better for it, but those are specific 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 gender. gender. Yeah. 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 And I think that tales like Hetty and getting those out there are incredibly important for inspiring the next generation. And knowing the struggles of what people had to go through uh, in order to achieve, and like 
yeah, you're the previous generations of the generation before that might not have been recognized, but you can carry this torch is so I'm not one for uh, virtue signaling uh, mm -hmm. as a, a method, but I think that you need your heroes. I have my heroes, Elon Musk. I uh, sure. uh, is an inspiration to me, and uh, but I, I heading want, the same way, kind of. Yeah, uh, Charles Babbage is as well. Like our uh, Volt, uh, you know, philosophy, like Voltaire, with his uh, recognition of the zeitgeist at the time. And I think that uh, having those figures is very important uh, uh, to say that this person carried the torch, now I can carry that torch. Uh, and they face challenges, and the challenges that I face now are, uh, uh, like, I, people have dealt with that fire. And that's why I think the Hedy Lamar story should be spread out as much as possible. No, I mean, yeah, of course, I agree. Like, it's, it's just, you mean, like, I'm always, in general, I mean, I'm, I can quote um, or cite for you things from, like, my favorite time period, but it doesn't really matter. Just what matters is the fact that there are people in history which haven't given their been given their due credit, and only the due credit was given like after the fact, and that's unfortunate. But it's so super fascinating to delve into these stories, to like to learn and or explore. Like I never knew that this person did this, and like. It was buried in history because because of the uh, the zeitgeist, if you were the social like framework at the time. So yeah, exploring this like so going back to what you said, like I I was personally I never heard, like again I only passingly heard of Hedy Lamar as a person and what what is she known for? Oh, the famous forties films and that's it. Like she's one of the like, yo the glamour girls from the the golden age of Hollywood, right? But also, did you know? She, you know, again, influenced how, like, fixed Howard Hughes' plane, like, aerospace designs, right? And all sorts of stuff, right? And it's so incredibly fascinating to me. And, like, these are things that are important to know that are just slipped through the cracks of, of our knowledge, or just, again, because of biases were buried under the carpet and so forth. And now it's, it's nice that at least something has come to light. They put together a very good documentary that shows her in a at least again a shadow of a light like even her own words right you have two faces i had to have this face and this face and sometimes another face even beyond that just to keep myself afloat but here's who i was as a core person here's what situationally i was like sort of not forced into but in a way in a sense also yes right but she had her own visions in mind and was just so enthusiastic about being in tune with the stuff that wasn't necessarily, yeah, I, I accidentally fell into a, you know, a, ho a, an acting Hollywood studio career, but that wasn't really my forethought, like my number one interest. So I just find it very fascinating and I don't know, it's, it was very affecting to me. What's kind of ironic about what you just said is that the trap she fell into, you now had basically put her in the set of disposable actresses from the yeah. 40s. Oh, she just put this role. What, what really interests you in her is her intellectual achievements. Exactly. And yeah. that's what makes her relevant to this day. And the fact that she didn't get that recognition back then, but her legacy hopefully continues to live on now is because of what she really wanted in her life that yeah. she was denied. A hundred percent. Like, again, uh, sorry, uh, I'll let you on said Chris, no. but there's, she mentioned it, or either it was a quote from herself or one of uh, her friends, like, in, in some other, like, alternate timeline, uh, alternate uh, social structure, she would have been an amazing scientist, and that's what she, yeah. would, that's what she wanted to do, but because, again, of the, the stigma, the, the biases, right, and the sexism and so forth, she was, like, sort of forced to be like, I'm a Hollywood star. But by night, I'm inventing, you know, in, incredibly important things, technology for our society. So it kind of goes back to what's going on today. We're like, um, take, for instance, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is in his mid to late 50s. And, you know, you they, her, his love interests are always like in their 20s or 30s uh -huh. or whatever. But, you know, you look any actress that's 
uh, after 40, they, 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 it seems like once you hit 40, you're eligible to play as a mom, even the grandma, the, 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 um, older aunt or whatever, yeah. wise elder, so forth. But you're, but rarely do you, do most, uh, actresses have the gravitas to actually break out of the molds because of the way the studio industry still is today that it was back then, you know, yes. misogynistic. Um, but there's one thing I wanted to uh, make mention of regarding the um, frequency switching. Um, she was married to uh, George Anthill, who is a yep. composer. And when she got the idea of this, they realized that for the player pianos, you could work at the same frequency. So you'd have 88 frequencies. Yeah, it's the same idea, right? The same general like structure. Yeah, but I mean, when you think about it now, it's like, oh, that's a no-brainer. But to conceive of it from nothing? Not 1940, man, right? That was, that's fucking brilliant, man. And I, I think it's great that her, her, um, her husband at the time um, even took like a back seat to that, that it was her impetus. It was Hedy Lamar and George Ante. Or he was lead on it. He like backed her up. He, he like sort of, he was, he was her assistant, right? And so like, you would assume like, Mostly, oh, it was my wife who helped me out. No, she was the lead, and yep. her husband was like, oh, I can contribute here and there, right? Well, Chris, to build off what you just said, sometimes students come up to me who are studying computer science or engineering or whatnot, say, what's the point of a liberal arts education? Why can't I just study, focus on math and science? And Good really, man. that's the argument for the idea of having a breadth of knowledge is that you can take applications of various fields of study, whether it's acoustics and music, or whether it's sociology or psychology, and apply it to further the field of study that you're going to. Any of them. Yeah. And I fear that, especially, at least in my aspect of graduate work, I feel that they promote uh, depth of study versus breadth of study where you can take uh, i think that the only way you can really go beyond that depth of knowledge that exists right now is to study other fields and take applications of what you can find in other works and continue forward with that and i feel that it's one of the great losses uh, uh or at least impediments of current graduate work is it's sole focus on uh on the depth and not the breadth yeah if you put blinders in yourself right so mm -hmm. like that means you're you're focusing so <coughs> laser laser like hard upon one certain aspect or element etc or what have you that you it, you can't take a step back and like possibly apply it to a, a broader range of things mm -hmm. and sometimes like that's what you need right you take inspiration from anything but if you're so like again chained down a one focal point of something that will negate input from other fields and will like limit you mm -hmm. by default. So yeah. yeah. And like she was like, and Hetty was like the opposite of that. She was so again, super interested in, in a wide range of a breadth of fields of study, as you mentioned, that I feel like that combined with her natural curiosity, her natural intelligence, her natural genius even, that her intellectual curiosity. Exactly. Is that's really important. it can yeah. like it would it combined to like a greater degree like, versus a different scenario so yeah uh, and that that's funny it, like her and da Vinci at the same time they didn't have any formal class in it they just intuitively took that breadth of study for their own uh, um, subconscious or conscious both and or you know. Um, that was their, that was naturally learned to them. There was no, they didn't even have to, exactly. which, which again, in hindsight seems logical, but you know, it's just like, it's amazing. I wouldn't have, you know. Well, no, it wasn't the norm in, in either in Da Vinci's time and even in Hedley's time, even like right 80 years ago, even in America in the 1940s, it wasn't like the norm. And so like, she's like somewhat of an outlier and was like, kind of ostracized for it <coughs> then again like she was supposed to be just a beautiful actress and that's it to be a pretty be a pretty face in hollywood films 
right? And that's all we, we, we want you for. But that's the beauty of what the message of this work is. Exactly. That, that beauty standards aren't what's important. What's important is what you accomplish in life intellectually will resonate far well, beyond far that. beyond just you know what you mm -hmm. think society wants of you. Is uh, that mean I'm, I'm like, glad? No, go. I think part of it, right? So, like, unfortunately, like this, the mindset again. That's all they want from her. Like, that's all this the um. The machine, if you will, required of her, but that didn't satisfy her at all. And she was so much more uh, engaged beyond that that you don't really hear about that. And but that's what's important, right? Mm -hmm. Like she, she even said, like I had to have two faces: one face just smile and be pretty, and you know, be be a, uh, an object essentially, like uh, embrace my objectification because that's what they expected of me. But at the same time, I would come home from doing a shoot on a stu on a movie and write out my you know, write out notes for the inventions, which that's what I actually cared about. So yeah, it's super interesting. Again, very very bittersweet. So good, Chris. Uh, yeah, I would, uh, I don't remember right now what I was going to say because I got lost in what you were going to say. Sorry. But it, no, 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 no. It's it's totally cool. Um. Yeah, but the I, I think okay, what I was gonna say was I'm glad she at least gets the recognition when she I, I'm glad because they did show um uh, a, a convention where her son spoke and she actually called yeah. him on his on his yeah, that was a very good head, scene which is awesome but I'm glad she got the recognition in her life's lifetime and that now thanks to this documentary and so forth we could say yeah Hedy Lamar was an inventor who was also an actress rather than an actress the other way yeah yeah exactly mm -hmm. an like, actress period and yeah it's funny, even her name like harley mar is not a real name like it was randomly chosen yeah. by a hollywood exec when she was literally like you know fleeing uh pre-war austria to america right like, even that like i found that a fascinating story mm -hmm. but you were forced to change like in a sense not your identity but well, your, your name it, it, your name, it, your name, name is, is your identity yeah. you know Exactly, but yeah. actually changing your name is not was not atypical at the time. Sure, my in-laws are named Chopin, and you know they're Polish. I think Polish Jews. It doesn't matter. Whole point is there that was not their name coming over. Even sure. though Chopin, the composer, was Polish Jew back at his time. When the it's just it's a funny how like when you cross the assimilation that takes place exactly yeah as an aspect of that so like, even that like sort of erase her identity to a degree right she like you're no longer heady um she had a very german you're name no longer Klaus a Hedwig. yeah from austria you're an american woman with a new name unless... yes exactly and like of course that's going to sort of mess with your psyche to a degree but yet she still persevered carried through and like was was again like um how how her mind worked did not allow her or like wouldn't allow her to just lie down and accept that she would say, I'm going to do my inventions as well. Sure. Maybe being in movies paid the bills and so forth, but that isn't my interest. Isn't my passion. Isn't my hobby. It's just something that like, you know, I, I happen to Hollywood men agree and all, all the work you know, people, all the war boys, if you will agree on beautiful. That's nice. But that isn't who I am. Does not define me. So yeah. Go on. Oh no, I'll just say uh, anything further you want to talk about with Hedy Lamar? I was gonna say that as much as we've said that like uh, Persepolis and Mouse should be required reading, I don't know which class you could put this in a multitude of classes, but I think this documentary is one of those that should be required viewing for high school any number of classes yeah well i'm recommending this to my students for both of my classes i teach in right now uh within the computer science field because i think that it is a story that should be out there yeah, man. yeah. regardless of if you feel at all beaten down by the system and i think everyone nowadays feels who doesn't of course sure uh 
yeah, it's bittersweet tale, but it shows what even the meekest of people can do. Yeah, even like so many factors against her, like yo, know, working against her and like biases and the zeitgeist, if you will, even that she managed to overcome and is val- like vindicated and validated by history and fucking A. So you're raise a glass to Hedy Lamar because she was one of the awesomest people, male or female, doesn't matter, humans to exist. And she's getting, hopefully this will help her get her due credit. And this documentary is a good job of highlighting her life. Even if our podcast introduces her story to one person, it's, it's worth, worth it. the story to speak. Yes. Well, we've got 394 on YouTube, so. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, I, 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 and I'm, the one thing I also liked about this documentary was definitely awards and all, because there was, they okay. definitely did not. But that's why it's, it's a. Talk soap, any of this stuff, because there's things in her life that, yeah, there were repercussions of, but certain times, certain things, it's like, eh, they, you know, you can't really even excuse her behavior, but if you're going to complain, com- if you're going to paint a complete picture, it's important to include that. Yeah, of one, course. One sure. thing that was disappointing was she did that one movie, uh, uh, White, uh, White Treasure? White Cargo, I think. White Cargo, where um, Lucille Ball actually did a parody of it that kind of offended her, which kind of bothered me because Lucille Ball in and of herself was, whereas Hedy Lamar said she was an inventor, but not a good business person. Lucille Ball was an incredible business person. Sure. Um, the cynical side of you um, would, I would, I would kind of hope that I, I'm sure I don't, I don't know either one of these women, and I, so I hoped it would not be, but it had, would not have been with malice. But there was a picture earlier on where they were sitting next to each other at some yep. thing. So I, I found it interesting because I'm like Lucille Ball should, they were on the same team just in different areas. Sure. Yeah, man. If nothing else, please go watch Bombshell, the documentary about Hedda Lamar, and learn about her and just be fascinated by it as we are. Yes. And just give her the credit she's doing. We're in theory, we'll be doing like a focus on polyglots if we can. I would like to because I'm interested in what's become of that. And I also think if we can do if I can do anything. I feel that, uh, yeah, I mentioned earlier that I feel that graduate work focuses on depth, not breadth. And if I can inspire people to look into beyond their, you know, yeah, uh, into other fields in order to inspire their own, uh, I will have accomplishment in my life. It's something I'm trying to impart upon my students is the, that breadth is just as important as knowing yeah. what you're working. And that's, that's like super important. I'm, and I'm glad that like this year, especially, and you know, with the pandemic and everything, the movie keeping up with current films is going to be kind of weird, but I mean, I'm glad because I think that you doing the shows, like I've been exposed to things that like either I, oh, I'd heard about, but forgot about, or things that were brand new to me or okay. things that I've always meant to like mouse or Persepolis read and then watch. I think, I think this, to you, Ian, this is a great idea because I got introduced to something and now I'm, you've got, we've got three more champions of this message. I was spotted around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, if nothing else, I'm Jonathan Ian Manzer, an attempt polyglot himself. <laughs> Make sure you have frequencies always. And Christopher Morgan, uh, quarantining himself. <laughs> yeah, but I'm hoping to be, um, not next weekend, but the weekend after. I'm looking forward to being back in the studio. So, hey. all right, sir. All right, all right. check out Bombshell, Bombshell the Lamar sure. story. It's phenomenal and important. And we'll see you next right. time. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Editing and engineering by Christopher Morgan. Music by Christopher Morgan. Check us out on YouTube and iTunes for the shows, and on Facebook and Twitter for updates. Or mods?